All right, engineers, in this video, we're going to talk about the coronary circulation. The coronary circulation is very, very important. It is the circulation that provides the actual oxygenated blood to the myocardium of the heart. So the coronary circulation is, again, one of the most important circulations within the body. The reason why is it is supplying oxygenated blood to the myocardium, the muscle of the heart. Now, the coronary circulation, where does it actually begin? Well, it starts particularly in the left ventricle. So let's go ahead and start there. So first off, we're going to have the left ventricle. The left ventricle is super, super important because it's the systemic pump and, in this case, the coronary pump. So this is going to be the first one, the left ventricle. The left ventricle is going to be pumping blood, okay, when it pumps the blood out of the left ventricle. It's going to go up through a very important structure, which is called the aortic semilunar valve. So the next structure that it's going to move through is it's going to move through what's called the aortic semilunar valve. Okay, so the left ventricle pumps the blood up into the aortic semilunar valve. When it pumps it through the aortic semilunar valve, it goes into the ascending aorta, the aorta that's actually rising up, right? So then it's going to go into the next one, which is called the ascending aorta. Now, the valves, right behind those valves, there's actually going to be these tiny little arteries, okay? Tiny little arteries called the right and left coronary artery. They are super, super important. But here's the next thing. Whenever the ventricles are contracting, they're pushing the blood out into the aorta. Now, this is during the systole. Whenever the heart goes into diastole, it undergoes relaxation, the valve flaps are going to snap shut, right, to prevent the blood from flowing back into the left ventricle. But when it snaps those valves shut, it shunts that blood right into the coronary circulation. So what does that mean then? That means that the myocardium of the heart is getting its oxygen supply when the heart is in diastole, when it's relaxing. That is super important. Okay, so ascending aorta is going to pump the blood into two different coronary vessels. Let's say that this is the right side, that's the left side. This one here is going to be called the right coronary artery, okay? This is the right coronary. On the other one over here is going to be the left coronary artery. Now here's where it gets really important. The right coronary artery is going to move down this nice little sulcus, okay? There's a nice little groove, a fat-filled groove called the coronary sulcus. That right coronary artery is going to run right down that little sulcus, and when it comes down the sulcus, it's going to give off a little branch. One of the branches it's going to give off on the right side of the heart is going to be called the marginal artery. So one of the branches is going to be called the marginal artery. Okay, that's one really important one. It's going to supply some of the actual right ventricle and a little bit of the lateral side of the right side of the ventricle. So a little bit of right and inferior part of that ventricle. Another one is called the posterior interventricular artery. So it's going to continue to move around, and it's going to supply the posterior aspect of the heart. And this is a really, really important one. Again, so this is called the posterior interventricular artery. Okay, so this is the posterior interventricular artery. Then the left coronary artery is going to give off two branches. So why when the left coronary artery comes in, it gives off a branch that moves completely down. It descends on the anterior aspect of the heart. You can have two names for this one. You can call it the anterior interventricular artery, or you can call it the left anterior descending artery. Okay, it doesn't matter. But again, you might hear one of those two different terms. I'm going to keep it kind of consistent here. Since I did posterior interventricular, I'm going to write anterior interventricular. So one of the branches that comes off of this coronary, really, really important one, is the anterior interventricular artery. This is probably one of the most important ones and the reason why is this artery is actually one of the most common arteries to get occluded by certain types of atherosclerotic plaques. And this artery is also referred to as the widowmaker, okay? Because if a clot, if some type of actual either an embolism or some type of coronary atherosclerotic plaque is developing there, it can occlude the blood flow to the actual surrounding myocardium, which can lead to ischemia of the myocardium. And if the, the actual ischemia persists, the tissue can become necrotic and die, okay? And this can lead to a myocardial infarction. So a very, very important artery, one of the most common ones to get occluded and lead to a very severe MI. The other branch, is called the circumflex, the circumflex artery, okay? That's called the circumflex artery. It's kind of going to wrap right underneath the auricle, okay, right underneath the left auricle, and it's going to supply a little bit of the left atrium and a little part of the uh, left ventricle. Now, in general, 
just in general, because we already covered every aspect that these arteries will cover in our anatomy of the heart video. If you guys haven't watched that, I'd, I would watch that if I was you. We cover the model and we go through every single branch of these arteries and what part of the myocardium they support. For right now, we're just going to say that it supplies the myocardium. That's what we discussed. We said that it's per specifically supplying the myocardium of the heart. That is the muscle layer. So the marginal artery is coming down the right side of the heart and supplying the myocardium on the right side of the heart. The posterior and diventricular artery is supplying the myocardium on the posterior aspect of the heart. So this is the actual myocardium on the posterior aspect of the heart. The anterior and diventricular artery is supplying a large amount. It's actually supplying the interventricular septum. It's supplying a little bit of the left ventricle, even a little bit of the right ventricle. So this guy here is going to be supplying the myocardium also. And then you have the circumflex, which is applying a little bit of the left, the actual atria, the left atrial muscle, and it's even supplying some of the actual left ventricular muscle. So this is going to be, again, supplying the myocardium. Now, if we were to be really particular, you guys know the arteries, if, like if we had circumflex artery, it actually branches into smaller arteries called arterioles. And then from the arterioles, they go into these tiny little exchange vessels called capillaries. So if you guys really want to be specific, we could say left coronary artery goes into the circumflex artery, which goes into the circumflex arterioles, which goes into the circumflex capillaries. And those capillaries are found in the myocardium of the heart, okay? So again, circumflex artery branches into arterioles, which branches into capillaries, and those capillaries are the exchange vessels in the myocardium. Coming out of the myocardium, you're going to have these tiny little uh, veins called venules. Those venules are going to come together and form decent-sized veins. What are these veins called? Well, let's go back in an order again. The vein that's actually draining the myocardium that was supplied by the marginal artery, this is a very important one. This is called the small cardiac vein, okay? This is called the small cardiac vein. So again, remember, arteries are delivering blood away from the heart, veins are taking blood back to the heart. So now we're gonna take this blood and we're gonna try to bring it back to the heart. So again, marginal artery goes to the myocardium and it gets drained from the myocardium by the small cardiac vein. If you really want to be particular, be venules and then the small cardiac vein, okay? Over here, posterior and ventricular artery is going to be picked up by another type. This is actually going to be picked up specifically by the middle cardiac vein. The middle cardiac vein. Okay? Then, Anterior ventricular goes to the myocardium, it's going to be drained. That myocardium from the anterior ventricular artery is going to be drained by the great cardiac vein. So this is drained by the great cardiac vein. Then the last one. The circumflex artery is going to go to the myocardium, provide the exchange, and it's going to get drained by what's called the posterior vein of the left ventricle. That's a weird one, right? But that's what they call it. They call it the posterior vein of left ventricle. Okay, so real quick recap. Myocardium from the marginal artery is drained by the small cardiac. The myocardium which is coming from the posterior ventricular artery is supplied, uh, drained by the middle cardiac. The myocardium that was supplied by the anterior interventricular artery is going to be drained by the great cardiac. And the myocardium that was supplied by the circumflex is going to be drained by the posterior vein of the left ventricle. Now what's really cool is these veins are going to dump into one big old sucker, big old vein. This big old vein is actually called the coronary sinus, okay? So this big old vein that it's going to drain into is called the coronary sinus. It's a very, very large vein. And now what happens is when this vein gets the blood from the small cardiac vein, the middle cardiac vein, the great cardiac vein, and the posterior vein, the left ventricle, it takes up a lot of blood. So what's going to happen is this coronary sinus is going to empty that blood into one of the chambers of the heart. Now this is deoxygenated blood, right? Because at the myocardium we're dropping off oxygen and picking up CO2. Deoxygenated blood is found on the right side of the heart. So where do you think this is going? This is going to the right atrium. And then from the right atrium, it would go down to the right ventricle, and then it would start the pulmonary circuit, which we already had a video on. And then it would go get oxygenated, come back to the left side of the heart, and then get pumped to the next destination, right? So again, real quick recap, left ventricle pumps blood into the, blood into the aortic semilunar valve, then from that into the ascending aorta. That branches into the right coronary artery, left coronary artery. The right coronary goes to the marginal artery and the posterior and the ventricular. These go to supply the myocardium by dropping off oxygen, picking up CO2. 
They are correspondingly drained by the small cardiac vein and the middle cardiac vein, which empties into the coronary sinus. The left coronary artery gives off an anterior interventricular branch and a circumflex branch, which go to their according myocardium and supply oxygen, pick up CO2 and other waste products. Then they are drained accordingly by the great cardiac vein and the posterior vein of the left ventricle, which empties into the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus, now with all of this deoxygenated blood, empties into the right atrium, which goes down to the right ventricle and gets sent out to the pulmonary circulation to get reoxygenated. And the last thing I wanted to say again is this circulation, you have to remember, the myocardium of the heart is only getting that blood supply when the heart is in diastole, which is the relaxation period. If the heart is actually, you have an excessively high heart rate, the heart will not be in diastole long enough for the myocardium to get that actual supply of blood. So it's very important that the myocardium has a nice diastole period so that it can get the oxygen it needs to continue to function properly. All right, engineers, I hope all of this made sense. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. As always, engineers, until next time, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna step out of frame so that you guys can take and write down all of this actual uh, diagram here for you guys' own uh, convenience, okay? Take it easy, engineers.